Howdy folks, it's Die Casper here again, and welcome back to NASCAR Thunder 2004. It's time for the Series 400 from Michigan. Oh boy, it's uh, hopefully something better than what happened at Pocono, because that was a disaster race. But Dale Jr. has actually clocked off two wins in a row, so uh, hats off to him in the championship hunt. We've got Michigan, and then finally we're going to Sonoma, and then we're going to Daytona, so I'm looking forward to that. Dale Jr. has taken the points lead away from Tony Stewart after collecting his third win. So, definitely shades of 2003 where uh, Dale Jr. finished second and Tony Stewart won it. And it was, what, 30 points between them. So, hopefully Dale Jr. can, uh, you know, get that championship. That'd be really freaking cool. But, anywho, let's go ahead and uh, get the car ready for... Michigan, because Michigan is going to be awful. I tell you, it's going to be awful. I'm going to save that extra grip for um, uh, Sonoma. But yeah, we got our power and uh, our only body that we can use. And let's go take this hunk of junk to Michigan. Alright folks, so we qualified 25th here today at Michigan. Uh, we did get the bonus, but we barely got it. So uh, let's go ahead and send it down to pre-race ceremonies. MRN is coming to you live from Michigan International Speedway for today's Sirius 400. Michigan always produces some great racing. What do you think, Barney? Well, look for speeds approaching 200 miles an hour and cars running three and four wide. That's a recipe for some exciting stuff. In 2002, Rusty Wallace had a streak of consecutive seasons with a victory stopped at 16. He and Ricky Rudd tied for the longest win streak, but you know Rusty wanted to take it for himself. Now he just has to look at starting a new streak. The 82 car has had some big time incidents recently with the 19 car. Quite honestly, I think his driving has gotten a little out of control. It's one thing to be out there driving aggressively and fighting for position, but he's gone over the line as of late. Jack Sprague really needs a good finish in this race. He's got a long way to go on the points list. And how frustrating that must be. You're working just as hard as everyone else, yet you just can't seem to finish well on race days to gain the valuable points you need. These guys need a good finish just to regain their confidence as a team. Engines are fired, and it's uh, Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd on the front row. Jeff Gordon sporting the Pepsi colors. Pretty cool stuff. Oh, boy. Qualified deep in the field, but hey, at least we got the 25th uh, starting spot bonus. Look at that beautiful Sharpie Ford right in front of us. So pretty much just need to just stay focused, man. Just stay focused. At least we got the bonus for hitting our qualifying objective. It's just Finishing the race would be great in the top 25 because that would be an extra 100k in the bank. And he could really use that money to help the team right now. But meanwhile, Kyle Petty's trying to pass this, which is always a terrible thing. Oh boy. I wish I could address the uh, brake bias in this game. That'd be really cool because when you hit the brakes, your car locks up. I wish I could kind of adjust it so I'm only just slightly tapping the brakes. But, you know, never mind. I ain't worried about that right now. I'm worried about racing here at Michigan. Trying to get a good finish. Trying to at least get some sort of a good finish. So it seems like 1 and 2 is our best corner, but 3 and 4 we really struggle in landing. And man, are we dropping like a rock. We are dropping like a rock right now, which is no fun. I want to be up there competing, guys. Big run down here on the bottom, though. Big run. Wow. That's good, though. So it's a 20-lap event here at Michigan, so not, not a super long race, but it's long enough to create some action as Hermie Sadler tries to race us and we completely scrape his car. I just want the top 25, man, and stupid 
57 car just trying to get around us on the bottom. I just cannot enter three and four right. I just can't. Because if we let out the gas and roll through the corner, we wash up and hit the wall. But if we slam on the brakes, not really slam, we tap the brake button, our car locks up and gets loose. So it's, it's such a, just an eggshell corner, man. And the 57 continues to try to hound our inside, which I don't blame him, which in doing so upsets our race car and we go up and tag Turner, Bobby Labonte, excuse me. So, yeah, definitely not on my uh, Christmas list, uh, Kevin Durant. Yeah, this car is just so bad. It, I'm going to go ahead and make my bold prediction for this race. We finish 42nd. Bet. If something is gonna, we're just gonna keep fading back, and we're gonna finish 42nd because we're just not competitive enough. That's 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 the truth, unfortunately. And there goes our tires. Not even a full five, five laps in, and we already got tires worn. Great, that's great. So we're gonna try to get round Kevin Grubb in the 57. Trying to, oh my god, really, car, please just land three and four, man. If we could just land three and four, that'd be just awesome. Every time we go in the corner, we're loose. But in one and two, man, the car is on, it's on rails almost. If we can nail three and four, we might be able to get a top 25. I mean, it's a little bit optimistic, but it's so like right, right here, right? Look at this. I can land the car and just feather the throttle and ride the exit. But in one, in three and four, for some reason, our car is just so darn loose. I don't understand it. You know, I blocked this stupid 57 car. See, like, I know we're going to super low entry. But still, though, man. It's annoying that 57 car needs to get out of the way. I'm going use it for some traffic, up, I guess. See, like, we're able to hold the run the inside line in one and two. I'm going to tag him because I'm annoyed by him. Well, I should have known there. That was stupid. Now our car's slower. Why do I keep doing this to myself? I'm going to try to, I'm gonna try to do the same thing we did in one and two. And look what happens. We wash up the racetrack completely. Now, what is the difference? That's what I want to know. I know your, your corner arc is different, but it's just overall the banking is the same. It, it shouldn't be that drastic of a difference. That's why I'm not understanding that what can I do to do better. And uh, yep, since we're rear view mirror driving, we try to run the inside line and we completely put to the corner and our car is going to be slower than crap now. So there we go. Like I said, we're going to finish 42nd this race. There is no way we don't. I am willing to bet we are going to finish 42nd in this race. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pit. This car sucks. I'm going to go ahead and pit. Ooh, very good getting on pit road there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up the race car because why not? And uh, just a fuel pressure, air pressure. Hopefully, this creates a little bit of a better race car handling. Because, like, I'm thinking if we tighten up the race car, maybe that fixes our 3 and 4. But it's going to hurt our 1 and 2. Um, air pressure adjustment, maybe maybe it'll help, help us, maybe it'll hurt us. I don't know. It probably will hurt us because it's going to increase our acceleration. Which is going to make us have to burp before the end of the corner. And this guy can't even put a lot. Oh, my God. He's so why do we get our people from like to just like what do we do? Do we just go to like a local dirt track every race every weekend and just hire a few like just a few guys named Bubba? But that's what I feel like we do. We are dead last, guys. We are dead last, and that's where we're gonna be running because everyone I think is pitted. We are dead last. Wow, what a shocker. I'm really thinking about upgrading our pit crew. I really am. I really, I really am thinking about upping our pit crew. Oh, I know some people have to pit. Okay, cool. Maybe this won't be so bad. Because we did get on pit road really good. Like we, we, we 
basically pushed our car as hard as we can to get on pit road. And we try to see how that you know wedge adjustment affects our overall handling. It's gonna hurt our one and two, I know that, but will it help our three and four? That's what I'm wanting. If we can help all three or three and four, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of one and two. A little bit better, a little bit better, so yeah, it did help. It did help, which is nice, but... What the heck? Of course, we're not passing anybody because we're on lap down. Darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. That sucks, guys. So now, oh yeah, we're, we're 40 second, guys, the magic number, and there goes our one and two. What the heck happened up here? Oh my lord. So, yeah, we're just going to have a terrible race once again. We're just going to have a terrible race as we got a smoker down in three and four. Stay out of their camera shot for the race winner. Love well, the apron, I guess. Maybe not, no, we'll go above the line. Oh, we got to run one more time around here, darn it. Forgot about that. So, does, does that mean. Oh, yeah, we're on the lead lap. <laughs> Ironically enough, we are still on the lead lap. And Junior just won another race. I think, no. Oh, we did? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't want to hit that car. Please, let me just... Oh, my God. Please. Let them go. Ricky Rudd just won this race. So, Dell Jr. must have been in the same boat Matt Kenseth was in. And... Oh, of course. The apron. Of course. Thank you, apron. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Storm the Marlin. Of course. The apron... I just can't do that right. It sucks, man. It sucks. Okay, that's it. Forty second. Let's just get out of here and go to Sonoma. Let's go do some road course racing. Ricky Rudd gets his second win of 2004. Um, he's honestly yeah, became a legitimate championship no, contender. For all these race teams because that can mean and there we have it. Everyone still hates us on the racetrack, but we still made a pretty good amount of money, though. So that's great. We made a pretty good amount of money. Uh, $975,000 in the bank. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to Diecast Buffet. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have a great one out there. And Diecast Buffet, signing off.